Praise the Lord. Well, we're together again by social media, if nothing else. And uh, this is Thursday night, Bible study. And uh, Sunday morning at 1030, we'll be sending you another uh, email blast, and it'll have the Sunday morning preaching on it. Tonight, I want to teach you regarding... Uh, Belief and Unbelief from Mark chapter 9, and we'll read at verse 24. Mark chapter 9 and verse 24. And it says, Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, I believe, I believe, help my unbelief. There are several notable things about this I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to see tonight. And the first one is, is this man must have been a man of faith. At least he had faith to get to Jesus. He knew that this situation with his son that was possessed of an evil spirit was way more than what doctors or anything uh, secular could help him with. And he was determined to get to Jesus and uh, the idea is, is that he believed. He would not have put forth the effort and get to the disciples. And they tried to cast the spirit out and could not. And he wouldn't have gone on and finally found the Lord if he didn't have belief in his life. But there's also the, the statement of the unbelief. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And I believe that's where most of us live. I believe that we're in the kingdom, that we approach Jesus. We know he's the answer. We've proved him time and again. We know he, what he can do and what he has done. And yet there are areas in our lives, there are things sometimes that come up that cause unbelief. We're a mixture of doubt and faith. Belief. And unbelief. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And I want to take a hard look tonight at that. And, and I believe the Holy Spirit wants to hone in on every one of us and find that place in us that causes doubt. What is it in me that causes me to collapse in my faith? What is it in me that brings up fear, that stays on me, that I can't get rid of? Because the kingdom of God is not about that. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I'm supposed to live with a devil but be an overcoming of him. I'm supposed to have an adversary, but I'm supposed to have absolute authority and victory and peace in my life over all the works of Satan. It's not supposed to be hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's not supposed to be that we get into a place to where we feel fearful and panicked and we're running for our lives, that's not the will of God. Now, you know, we all naturally believe in the kingdom of God. We believe in what Christ has done for us. But then there are places many times in us where we disbelieve. And I just want to say it's not based on the evidence, but on a faulty, disbelieving heart. God has never failed anybody, not one time. God's word has never been proved wrong, not one time. So we can't afford to look at God and say, what's wrong with you that you didn't intervene or overcome or give me the answer? We have to look inside our own hearts. The Bible tells us over and over how passionately God loves us. He loves us a thousand times more than we love the people we're closest to in this world. God is our friend. He's nobody loves us like he does. And sometimes we need to repent over things that have happened, I think, in our past that we thought God failed. You know, this man had an experience with the disciples of failure. So in recent history, he had failure with coming to God, and now he comes to Jesus. He said, I spoke to your disciples, 
And they tried, but they could not cast the devil out of my son. And so he had a real concrete reason. And, and you may be that way. You may have something, you know, you serve God and you go through the motions and you look holy on Sunday and everything's going good. But down deep, there are places where you and God are, you have a rift. There's a place of fear. There's a place of doubt. God didn't come through like you thought he should have. God didn't answer that prayer. That loved one died instead of getting healed. That, that situation, it didn't seem like God answered it. Or maybe God didn't answer it in the way that we were accustomed to. Whatever it is, I believe that we need to go straight to repentance and say, Lord, forgive me for having those thoughts against you. Because you do not fail. You do not answer like I want every time. You do not come through on my timetable. You don't always do everything in accordance with my will, but you never fail. Your children are your prime possession. We are the apple of your eye, and you would never, ever let your children down. So go to repentance and say, Lord, I repent over the times in the past when I thought that you failed me because that can be something that sticks in your spirit that is an open door for the enemy. And every time a test of faith comes, you, you struggle with it because the devil brings up that time. Remember that time, our past history with God sometimes doesn't work out. We have unanswered prayers. He says no when we think he should say yes. But we have to leave room for God to be God. If God, everything God did, I understood it, then I am, I'm on the same level as God. I wouldn't need faith. I wouldn't need trust. I wouldn't need joy. I could just simply say, I know God will do this. God would really become a vending machine. I could put in my faith and get out my miracle. Put in my faith, get out my answer. But we know that God is much greater and much better than that. And sometimes when God says no, he's got something better in mind for us. We're just smart, not smart enough to know what to ask for. Sometimes he knows that this situation can't be answered in the way that we're praying. But here with this man, he had a legitimate reason to doubt as far as I'm concerned. Because he had come and gotten prayed for over the disciples of his son and they had not been able to affect any victory for him. And even with that, he comes on to the Lord. See, you got to keep coming. You can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. You can't say, oh, it's useless. God's not ever going to answer. Listen, if all of us did that, none of us would make heaven. You make heaven because you persist and you keep going. You keep believing. Even when doubts and fears and unanswered prayers attack us, we say, no, I believe in the goodness of God, and I'm not going to attack God. I'm going to attack myself. I'm going to look inside. I'm going to get alone with God. I'm going to ask myself some tough questions. I'm going to pray until I get peace, real peace, on every level in my life. And I can tell you, folks, if you've got peace, you've got it all. Whether you get the answer that you wanted or not, if God gives you his peace, you, that is his personal assurance that you're in his kingdom, that you are loved by him, and that he is going to work it all out for the good. Amen. Hallelujah. The problem in this situation in Mark 9 was not with this man who had the demon-possessed son. It was with Jesus' own disciples. It was with his own disciples. The church failed the man. Sometimes the church becomes the stumbling block because the church is not perfect. It's, it's populated with imperfect people. And sometimes our complaints are legitimate, but they're not pleasing to God and they become a stumbling stone. They become a leverage tool for the enemy to use against us. And so here we find that these disciples had failed in their efforts and, and Jesus, you could feel the pain in Jesus' voice when he says, oh, how long will I be with you all? Come, bring that boy to me. 
you could feel the consternation and the upset that Jesus had over their lack of faith that caused this man to experience unbelief. Their lack of faith caused this man to experience unbelief. And he said it with tears. Lord, I believe. If I didn't believe, I wouldn't be here. But help my unbelief. Take everything out of me that causes doubt. Take out my fear. Take out my worry. Oh, we're in lockdown again. Oh, there's more people getting the virus. Oh, is, am I going to be next? God, where are you? God's right there. Trust him. Put your faith in him. And know that he's bigger than any battle that we face. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He kept coming and he said, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. I challenge you to attack your unbelief. I challenge you to attack your doubt. Attack, attack the things in your life that you know are displeasing to God. And really go after it. You know, I was thinking about there's no substitute for time. And you know, we, we, we spend minutes with God and hours with our trouble. We spend minutes praying, trying to believe God, and then we spend hours and hours and hours letting the devil talk to us and whisper doubt and fear and unbelief. What we need to do is reverse that and spend hours and hours with God, building our faith and our trust, and let the devil be there a minute and kick him out. It's all a battle in the mind. Amen. So much time in the Word is needed. Not a few minutes, but a few hours. Isn't it amazing how time seems to drag on some things when you're praying or you're reading the Bible? You yawn, your mind wanders. You, you, know, you pick up the book and you say, I'm going to read this. And you, your, your mind is gone all over the place and you find yourself sleepy. And yet we can sit down at the television and watch a movie for two hours and set their transfix and remember the plot and all the things that were said, we've got to reverse that. We've got to learn that we've got to spend some real time with God, not a few minutes. Really spend time with the Lord. Extra time in prayer and extra time in His Word. And then thirdly, surrender this thing that you're struggling with. Surrender the whole thing to God. The whole enchilada. Lay it all out there before the Lord's Lord. I surrender this to you. I'm not going to carry it anymore. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to be fearful. I don't care what report I hear. I don't care who calls me. I'm going to trust you. You're God. And if you never answer on this, I'm going to trust you to take care of it. Because I know the first time I prayed, you heard me and you're going to do it. Hallelujah. What shall separate us from the love of God? Paul said nothing. Nothing shall separate us. Pray against your own unbelief. Get violent and aggressive with the way things are in your life if you don't like them spiritually. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Amen. Amen. You know, when you, when you go with God, it's like when you're driving on the freeway behind a big truck. All of a sudden, after 20 miles of driving behind that truck, somebody's running interference, and your gas mileage goes up, and it's easy to drive. Somebody much bigger than you is pushing all the opposition away, and suddenly your car is easier to drive. That's the same thing when we walk with God. God goes out before us, and we just draft in behind him. But man, when you get out there on your own and you pull out and say, God, I'm not going to go with you anymore. I'll do it my own way. Thank you. I'll carve out my own path. I'll make my own trail. And you've got all the headwinds of life and the enemy. Boy, it can bring you to a standstill. I pray that God will help us. Help us, Lord, with our unbelief. Don't let unbelief be in any part of your life. On any area of your life. 
I prayed for a man not long ago, and I said, do you believe God can heal this in your body? And he said, I don't know if I do or not. So I backed off the big problem that he had, and I went down a few notches, and I said, how about that? Well, maybe. So I backed down to a sinus infection and head cold. I said, do you think God could heal that? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was at sinus infection and head cold level faith. And what he needed to do was go higher, go higher, go higher. Can God only heal colds or can God heal cancer? He can do it all. It's the same faith, but you got to grow in it. Remove the doubt, the fear, and the unbelief. Take responsibility for your own faith. Take responsibility for your unbelief. Say, Lord, I want this out of my life in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to pray over you right now, and we're going to agree. The Bible says if two of you will agree, it will be done. And so you just reach out your hand to that screen, wherever it is, and let's agree. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I take authority over doubt and fear and unbelief. I take authority over every spirit that would hinder the people of God from trusting you and from coming into peace and rest and joy and faith and confidence. God, our lives are hidden in you, and we want to experience every ounce of victory that you accomplished for us when you came out of that tomb. We want all the victory. We want all the power, and we want all the peace that you can give to us. We refuse to, to pull back and withdraw and to be afraid and to be fearful. We press forward in the name of Jesus, and we trust you in the mighty name that's above every name. The name of Jesus, amen, and amen, and amen. I hope this lesson has helped you some this week, and Sunday morning I'll be preaching a message for you right here. God bless you, everyone. Amen.